if you had consulted with your expert. That's one of the best things I've ever eaten. <laughs> Hello my friends and welcome back to my kitchen. It feels so good to say that. I am so excited for today's video. For one, because this is like my first true video in the new house, in my new kitchen, and I am so excited to get in here and do some cooking. And for two, because y'all know if you've been around here for a while, we love some appetizers in this house. I know you guys do too, and I have some really delicious ones to make with you guys today. But before we jump in, I do wanna say that this video is a collab with one of my very, very best friends, Amber over at Amber at Home. I'm sure a ton of you guys already follow her and love her. If you don't, I will leave her channel and her video linked down below. She always makes the best food. So I know her appetizers are going to be amazing as well. So be sure you head over there, subscribe, watch her video, and tell her that I sent you. But let's get to cooking. Okay, so for this first recipe, I'm really pumped to make it because it is a surprise for Mr. B. He has no idea what I'm making. He's actually upstairs on a call right now, so I can't wait to finish these and then get him to taste test and see what he thinks. If you're like an OG subscriber, y'all know that Bunkies are one of his favorite things is like the sausage, cream cheese, Rotel, Velveeta, cheese dip like he loves it he wants it for every occasion and so I saw this recipe on Instagram and I was like I have to make this we're gonna like deconstruct it and stuff all that goodness in crescent rolls oh my goodness gracious so let me flip you around and show you these ingredients so for this recipe of course you'll need some crescent rolls cream cheese rotel the original recipe does not call for velveeta but since i have these little velveeta slices i thought that would be really easy and ooey gooey cheesy deliciousness to add some in so i'm going to add those and then of course you'll need some sausage we have about half a package left and since it's just b and i i'm just going to use this but of course if you're making enough to feed a crowd you would use an entire package of sausage Okay, so now that we have our sausage cooked, I went ahead and rolled out our crescent rolls. Like I told you guys, I'm just making a few for Bunky and I, but I'm gonna go ahead and start putting down a little piece of our Velveeta cheese. I'm gonna top it with a tiny dollop of our cream cheese, and then I'm gonna use a slotted spoon to get out the Rotel. You don't want any of that juice. You just want the tomatoes and green chilies, and I'll put a little dollop of those as well as the sausage on top of our two cheeses, and then we'll roll these up and get them in the oven. Okay, I'm finding the best way to do this is to almost fold it like it's going to be a little ball versus um, a crescent roll, but that's how I can keep kind of everything stuffed in there. So if you're having trouble rolling these up, do it like this. Okay, and these are going into the oven at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> you caught me? Okay, this is a total surprise. Yeah. Bunny has no idea what I made. But all I can say is this is like one of your favorite things uh -huh. stuffed into a crescent roll. Mm. Okay, we're gonna cut this bad boy open because I wanna see if it's nice and cheesy inside. And these um, only took like 15 minutes instead of 20. They sound like they have a nice texture going. I'm, I'm excited. Ooh, it oh, looks good. A little, little cheesiness in there. Okay, so do you know what this is? I, th I think so. There's sausage in there. It looks like cream cheese. Uh-huh. Well, I see the can of Rotel right there. The Rotel right there. Right there. So. Okay. So it's like your favorite cheese dip, but yeah. inside crescent roll. And instead of tortilla chips, I have crescent roll as my vessel. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it super hot? Mm. Not too bad. Okay. Kind of go all the way across. Yeah. It's really nice and even. Yes. 
Give us the rundown. What do you think? I mean, if I went to a Super Bowl party and this was an option uh -huh. for me, I would love it. You would. I would be ecstatic. To, it's to, delicious, to right? See this. Yeah, I mean, it's very good. And they were so easy to make. I almost feel like two. This would be something that like probably probably holds up well. Yeah. Throughout the duration of the night. It's one of the better cooked crescent rolls I've, I've come into. Oh, I'm so glad you like them because y'all know Bunky doesn't love crescent rolls. But I saw this recipe mm -hmm. and I was like, I gotta make this for mm -hmm. him. That might have a bit of rotel in it. America. Yay! Okay, these are a winner. I'm so excited. Okay, Bunky has one suggestion he wants to give us. I don't know how this would turn out, but you know how I love my spice. Yes. I think just laying like one or two little pickled jalapeno slices on top. Ooh, for okay. The, for the bake, that's gonna give you a nice little visual appeal. Oh, I like it. Might even let people know that there's a potential little bit of spice in there. And I, I just, I think it would be a welcome addition. Okay, I like it. I gotta tell y'all something. Every time I make a recipe that Bunky doesn't know exactly what it is, he's always questioning me like, what is this? Is this gonna be good? And y'all know how he feels about crescent rolls. And he's like, Bunky, you put my favorite thing in a crescent roll. And guess what? He loves it. So, booyah to him. Okay, those are so delicious. Bunky already had like two or three of them. Um, so you guys have to try those and tell me what you think. I am going to make our other two recipes tomorrow because I forgot one ingredient at the grocery store, so I gotta run back and get that. And then our other recipe kind of takes all day because it's a crock pot recipe. So I'll meet you guys back here in the kitchen tomorrow morning. Okay, so I'm getting started on this second recipe, and this one could not be any more simple. And let me just tell you, I already cannot wait for dinner tonight because it's gonna be scrumptious. All you need is your crock pot, a pork shoulder, and a Coca Cola. Cola, that is it and I was lucky enough to find a smaller pork shoulder every grocery store I went to they only had these like massive ones and I was like okay these are way too big for just me and Bunky but I went to Walmart and I found this perfect size one so that's what we're gonna use today so let's get this in the crock pot and I should probably tell you all what we're actually making so they're gonna be just the simplest pulled pork barbecue sliders ever we're gonna put them on some Hawaiian rolls which sounds incredible and all you need is pulled pork and coca-cola I've never made them this way so I'm so excited to see like how the coke makes them tender and how it makes them taste and then once they're finished tonight um, we will top them with some barbecue sauce and they will be good to go Okay, now for this Coke, um, since I'm using a little bit smaller of a pork shoulder, I'm probably only gonna do like three-fourths of this, but if you're using like a Mac Daddy one, then go ahead and use the entire can of Coke. And because I cannot leave a recipe alone, I'm gonna sprinkle the tiniest bit of this Kinder's all-purpose butcher seasoning on top. Okay, so we're gonna pop our lid on and then I'm gonna let this cook on low. I'm thinking because mine is smaller, it's probably only gonna take about six hours, but we'll check back and see how long it actually takes. Okay, complete side note, but we got our new fridge delivered today and at first, I was not happy about it because it just seems so big in this kitchen, but it's growing on me, so I think I like it now. Um, our pork shoulder, looks so good i think it has about like 15 to 30 minutes left and then it should be done it's pretty tender in there already so i'm so excited i need to get the barbecue sauce out and then we were gonna make um some slaw but i realized i don't have any mayonnaise so i don't think we can make the slaw but i am going to make some baked beans to go along with it and actually now that we have our new refrigerator i need to do a huge grocery haul we need lots and lots of things so i think i'm gonna do that tomorrow and then that video should be up later this week i'll probably add a recipe to it so be on the lookout for that okay i think we're ready to shred the pork I'm gonna let you be our pork shredder. All right. My mouth is watering because honestly, I'm so hungry and so excited for this dinner. I'm a little nervous about it. Although I'm super <laughs> sad that I did not get to make your slaw, but you understand. <laughs> I'm 
So you've been poking and prodding this all day. Yes, and, and I feel like it's tender has, enough. The time has come. Now I will say I thought it was going to take a shorter time, but it actually yeah. took almost eight hours. Well, if you had consulted with your expert <laughs> barbecuer, this is true. I should have talked to you about this. I tried to tell you. That's where you know a couple hours ago you were thinking like, oh, this is you know. I thought at six hours it was going to be done. Time is your friend when it comes to barbecue. You're right. It truly is. Mm -hmm. um, you I'll, still got this thing on. Oh, see, we should have turned that off a little bit ago. As no, well. I think it was still fine. Keep cooking. But I will say this has taken the full eight hours. So even if you have a bigger one, make sure you put this thing in there in the morning. So by the time you're ready for it, it's go time. Okay, I do want to mention though that the recipe definitely says to get that like fatty part off. So Bunky's kind of going around and getting all of that taken out of here before we start shredding it. Okay, I have to tell y'all, this tastes so good. I already snuck a bite, but now that we have it all shredded, we're just going to add it to our little Pyrex. And then I have some barbecue sauce right here that we'll top it with and then just give it like a good stir. Our baked beans are all done. I would have done these in the oven, but like I told you guys, we're out of a lot of things. I desperately need to go to the grocery store. So I just heated them up on the stove top. And then I have a few Hawaiian rolls in the oven, just kind of heating those up as well. Okay, this pork is so good. I cannot wait to dig in. I'm so excited to try these out. Bunky, excitement level is high. <laughs> I've already snuck one. I'm over here eating it. It's delicious. I gotta say, mm -hmm. as far as I guess what one would expect pulled pork to be. Uh huh. Without it actually being on like a Like a smoker. smoker. This actually turns out pretty good. It's so delicious. Pretty good. And I wouldn't I'll, mind the slaw being on there. I know, I feel so bad I didn't have any mayonnaise. I will say that, that probably gives like a great crunch mm -hmm. to add to it. Yeah. But it's just literally the pork shoulder and Coca-Cola. Sorry I'm talking with my mouth full. <laughs> and a little bit. Mm. Of seasoning. I put the kinders on there, but I really didn't put very much, so. No, you didn't. All the flavor is probably coming from just the pork and the Coke. The Super Bowl is at like six o'clock. Mm hmm. So even with this, if you wake up at eight or nine, put it on. Eight o'clock in the morning, right into the, into the slow cooker, you got eight hours until four o'clock. You're gonna be good to go. You're golden. And you didn't yeah. have to do but like minimal work and minimal cleanup. Yeah. Okay, I am so excited for this third recipe. I feel like I saved the best for last. And the only thing that we have to do to kind of prep for this recipe is to almost like marinate the tomatoes. We're gonna make the yummiest caprese dip. Bunky is going to die for this, okay? Um, and also, it is gorgeous here today, like over 70 degrees, pure sunshine. Like this is why we moved to the beach. I'm so excited. So as soon as I have these marinating, I'm actually gonna go take a walk down to the marsh walk, get a coffee, enjoy the palm trees and sunshine. I'm so excited. So anyway, let's get these marinating and then we'll put the dip together in about 30 minutes. Does that sound good? Yeah. I'm like drooling for this. So you're gonna, we're gonna get the tomatoes marinating first. You're gonna go take a walk and then you're gonna come back? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, don't make all the people who are buried in snow jealous oh, I'm sorry, of our weather. Oh, I'm sorry. Rude. I know. Okay, so I have all of our little stuff set up. I went ahead and washed and then halved our little cherry tomatoes. So we're just going to put these in our bowl. And then to this, we're going to add just a splash of olive oil. 
And then we're gonna add some balsamic vinegar, yum. And then a big crack of black pepper and salt. You want some more? I don't know, I mean, you know I really like, I really like a baked tomato. I know you do. Not this, a baked potato. This is why you're gonna be obsessed. Like, Monkey, you're going to love this recipe. Mm. This recipe has mascarpone, did I say it? Mascarpone? Mm-hmm, yeah, cheese, I saw that. Which I've never had, I don't think. And I wanna tell you guys, if you don't have mascarpone cheese or you can't find it, you can also just use cream cheese, but I feel like this mascarpone takes it over oh. the top. So our tomatoes are marinating. I'm gonna go take my walk, and then I'll meet you guys back here in just a few minutes. <laughs> I might even come on the walk with you. Oh, you should. Stretch my legs. Can you? Come for my walk with me. Okay, come on. Okay, we are back from our walk. We're a little bit sweaty. <laughs> it was so nice outside. I'll insert a few clips right here. Okay, so next to our bowl, we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of our ingredients. So we have some mascarpone here, some really good mozzarella, so I got the Sargento, and you just want it to be shredded. Some good Parmesan cheese, some red pepper flakes, a little bit of seasoned salt, so I'm gonna use the anti no -nos if you don't have this. Just use whatever seasoned salt you want, or just regular salt. And then, of course, some black pepper, and we'll mix that all together. Y'all pay no attention to the way I look. It was so windy out on the marsh walk and I have not looked in a mirror since we got back. So there's no telling what my hair looks like. But I wanted to tell you the actual recipe calls for like a fresh garlic clove and basically to like season your cast iron skillet with it. So just unwrap it, take it and like rub it all over the cast iron skillet. Well, of course, I need to go to the grocery store so bad, so I don't have a fresh clove of garlic. So I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder to our cheese mixture, and then we're gonna go ahead and get some olive oil and white wine in our skillet, bring that to a boil, then we'll add in all of our cheese and then bake it in the oven. Okay, so I'm just adding one fourth cup of white wine to my skillet, and this will cook out, but if you do not wanna use white wine, you can use like a sherry vinegar or lemon juice anything like that also side note you're gonna add this into a cold cast iron skillet and just kind of bring it to a light simmer so once you see this little like shimmer or dancing you're gonna go ahead and add your cheese in very slowly making sure everything's gonna get nice and melted and then we're gonna pop our cast iron skillet into the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes Okay, so once you kind of see this consistency and you can tell everything is starting to melt, this is when you know that it is time to go in the oven. Okay, my mouth is watering. This looks so good. Now for the fun part. So I bought one of those big like fresh mozzarella balls. So I'm just taking it and I'm gonna break it off into chunks and we're just gonna add this right on top And next we're gonna take these marinated tomatoes and we are gonna put these right on top. I mean, do y'all see this goodness? Oh my gosh. So now this is gonna go back in the oven for about 10 more minutes. Okay, so because I'm crazy, I'm gonna go around and just kind of dab off some of this grease cause I feel like there's kind of a lot. But y'all, this looks crazy delicious i cannot wait so we're gonna finish this off hang on one second okay so to finish this off i'm gonna add a few more red pepper flakes if you don't want that heat don't add those and then i'm gonna do a good amount of fresh basil and lastly a good amount of balsamic glaze does this not look incredible B, yeah. you are about to die. Oh, it smells like, uh, it smells like I'm in a pizzeria. 
This is about to be your jam what? if I have ever seen something. Oh my gosh, you even cooked it in a cast iron. In the oven? Yeah. Oh, bunky. Like, do you see this? So, oh, let's see here. You gotta, you gotta get in there. I took a bite and I, you? I just, you, I'm gonna let you do it. All right. You go ahead. Let me just get another little chip here to. You're gonna need it. Have a little scoop here. Yeah. I mean, are you dead right now? Well, this looks like it's gonna be a little warm. <laughs> no, it's still good. I mean, it's it's not like too hot. I promise, I took a bite. Okay, here goes. Okay. Did you get some tomato in yours? No, of course no. not. Okay. Tell me, tell me, you're dead. <clears throat> you're about to shed a tear. That's one of the best things I've ever eaten. <laughs> For real though. For real. For real. Oh, trust me, I know, because I just took a bite and I was like, Oh my gosh, when my bee eats this, he is going to be obsessed. That right there is good. Amazing. And y'all, it's beautiful. Like, presentation, everything, gorgeous. It took no time at all. Let me tell you, if you make this for a party, your people are never leaving. They're coming back. It's not going to even last long. Like, it'll, be, it'll be gone. This was amazing. It's good with our little, you know, pita chips. Uh-huh. I think, like, even if you had... Some oh baked God. bread. You, yeah, you know on top? what would be so good with it? What? If you had focaccia. Oh! And like pull it apart into little like bite-sized pieces. Yeah. Like rosemary just, focaccia. Yeah. Oh exactly. my goodness. That that's where it's at. But this whole, I mean, this this right here, it's, this is one of the best things we've made in ever some time. Yeah. Ever even ever. It's so good. Okay, I'm about to go dive into this cheese dip. Y'all have to make this recipe. It is out of this world good. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here. Be sure you head over and check out Amber's video as well and subscribe to her channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe here before you leave. I would love for you to join our family. Give this one a thumbs up. I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.